In this video, I want to give an overview of all the different bits that can be used with a Dremel that you would get in your basic bit package. I will also include some of the more uncommon bits that I really like to use myself. And links for all of the bits in this video will be in the description below. Let's get started with the collets. The collet secures the bit to the Dremel. Collets usually comes in four different sizes, which you can see on the screen right here. And for different sizes of bits, you have to use a different collet. But the most common collet and bit size is the 1 8 inch. So that is what you're going to use most of the time. If you don't want to deal with collets, you can use this keyless check right here, which will hold any size of bit up to 1 8 of an inch. These bits right here are mandrels, and they are used to attach different working and cutting heads. For example, this 401 bit can be used to attach buffing pads. The 402 mandrel can be used to attach small cutting discs or sanding discs. And the easy 402 mandrel can be used to attach a wide range of different Dremel bits, like cutting disc or abrasive buffs. These are routing bits, and they basically make your Dremel into a small mini woodworking router. And they can basically do the same thing as a woodworking router can do, but just not as good. You can use these to shape edges of wood, you can make grooves, you can make inlays, and you can do so much with these bits and they work just fine for small woodworking projects. I really like them and I think they are a great set to have in your Dremel kits. These are engraving bits for wood. They have sharp cutting edges that chips away small chunks out of the wood and they are great for making detailed patterns into wood. So you can, for example, engrave letters into wood, or you can make stars for the American flag. This is the 561 multipurpose cutting bit. And as the name suggests, it is supposed to be used to cut a wide range of different materials. Like for example, wood, plastics, laminate, plexiglass, and so on. But I have found it useful for cutting drywall. It is really good for cutting out those small shapes in drywall, like for electrical boxes or circles and things like that. And this is supposed to be used with a cutting guide, like for example the Dremel plunge router, or the more simpler cutting guide. This is the EC544 wood cutting wheel. And this is my favorite Dremel bit for cutting wood and shaping wood. Now it is really effective at cutting into wood and you can cut away small chunks of the wood and you can also use this to shape the wood into any shape you want really. Now it is coated with carbide dust on the edges, which makes it really durable. I've had mine for over a year now and it still cuts really well. So I can highly recommend getting this one if you are into wood carving. This uses the EC402 mandrel. This is a cut sole burr for the Dremel. This bit is really effective at removing a lot of wood quickly. So it is great for wood carving and shaping wood. Now, the cut sole burrs comes in many different shapes. I have the Flame Extreme Burr, which is one of my favorite shapes. This is one of the most aggressive bits that they have. You can see how aggressive it is on the spikes right here. Now, these bits are really durable. They will last you for a long time, but they can be a little bit expensive. These are sanding drums, and they are the best sanding bit that you can get for your Dremel. They mainly come in two different sizes, and that is the quarter inch, and the half inch sanding drum. I mainly use the half inch sanding drum. Now, this comes in varying grits. This one is a really rough one. I think it's about 40 or 60 grit. This is really aggressive and effective at removing wood. You can also get it up to like 600 grit, which leaves a really clean and smooth surface. Now, the sanding drums that the Dremel brand makes are really the best quality ones but they can be a little bit expensive. So if you want to save money, you can get a big value pack like this one of Amazon. The quality of these is a little bit worse than the Dremel brand, but you just get so many that you won't run out of sanding drums anytime soon. Now you can also get a sanding disc for your Dremel. This uses the 402 mandrel. This is supposed to be used for sanding wood and also other materials, but I mainly use them for polishing and cleaning off rust for old tools. When using this, you get a really clean and smooth surface on metal. So yeah, I don't really use them too much on wood. Uh, this screw right here in the middle usually comes a little bit in the way because you can't use them flat, you have to use them on the side. But yeah, a cool little bit right here. There are many different cutting discs for cutting metal with a Dremel. We can divide them into two categories and that is the small cutting discs and the large cutting discs. The small cutting disc uses the 402 mandrel. And these are very brittle when you actually use them to cut metal. I do not really like to use them because they have a chance to break on you while you're doing the cutting and they will go flying in all different directions. But they will cut metal, but I generally avoid using the small cutting discs 
Now, the large cutting discs are much better and much more reliable when you actually use them to cut metal. They just feel much safer and you can trust them to not break on you while you are cutting. Now, the cutting disc can be used to cut most types of metal, but it is best used to cut small metal pieces like, for example, screws or small bolts or even some tin metal sheathing. You can cut thicker pieces of metal as well, but this is going to be hard on the Dremel and it's also going to be hard on the bit, so the Dremel and the bit will wear out really quickly. These are grinding stones. They can be used for grinding sharp metal edges, stilt marks on pottery, tile edges, and they are generally used to remove imperfections in really hard materials. They can also be used for sharpening, like for example knives and scissors, but the Dremel is not the best tool to use for sharpening anything really. And also, if you use these on softer materials like brass or aluminum, the bits will quickly become clogged and the performance will suffer. This is a set of tungsten carbide burrs. They are supposed to be used for deburring metal and metal work in general. You can, for example, shape metal, make grooves in metal, and like I said, deburr and clean up edges with them. You can use them for both hard and soft metal, but they can actually also be used on wood. They are not the best for wood carving, but they have cutting edges, so they will do an okay job at wood carving. And these are some of the bits that you should have if you're into any kind of metal work with the Dremel. These are also very affordable and you can get them for cheap on Amazon. This is a set of aluminum cutting bits. They are very similar to the previous carbide birth, but they have a bigger distance between the cutting edges, so they will cut larger chunks of softer metal. And these are really great for shaping and cutting into aluminum quickly. But the great thing about these is that they are very good for wood carving. They cut into the wood really quick and they leave a smooth shiny surface so you don't have to sand that much afterwards. So if you do aluminum work or wood carving, you should have this set right here. This is a set of metal drill bits for the Dremel, but these can also be used on wood. As you can see here, they come in seven different sizes, so if you want to change between these bits, you also have to change the collets. So this is where the keyless chuck would come in really handy. And these drill bits do what all other drill bits do, they drill holes in all kinds of materials. These are polishing pads. Now these bits are used for polishing different metals. They mainly come in two different sizes. You have the large ones and you have the small ones as you can see here. And you attach them with a 401 mandrel. You just screw the mandrel into the polishing bit. To do the actual polishing we have to use some polishing compound. And now we can make anything look shiny again. Personally I haven't done much polishing with the Dremel but this is what you use it for. This is the nylon bristle brush, which is another bit for polishing with the Dremel. Now it has soft bendable brushes attached to it, and it is mainly supposed to be used for like general cleaning and polishing purposes. This is a metal brush, which is a lot more aggressive than the nylon brush. And metal brushes are used for cleaning up metals, removing rust from metals, and generally just more aggressive cleaning purposes. But I have to say you have to be careful when using these metal brushes. The metal wires that are attached to it will come loose when you use it and they will just shoot out all over. So definitely wear protection glasses when using this and cover up your skin. This is an abrasive buff and it is used for rough polishing of surfaces. And it actually lays somewhere between sanding and polishing. And I sometimes use these to like polish off my woodworking projects when I'm finished with them. And they leave a clean, smooth, shiny surface on my woodworking project, especially if I use them on hardwood. And when we want to work with really hard materials, we need an even harder material to use for our bit. And these are diamond bits. These bits are coated with a diamond dust that are extremely hard, extremely durable, and can cut into most materials. As you can see here, they come in many different sizes and shapes, and they are usually very affordable. These diamond bits can be used for engraving glass or cutting into stone. And we also have a diamond cutting disc. And this one is used for making those deep and clean cuts into these hard materials like stone or glass. And this cutting disc is very thin, so you don't remove a lot of material when you're cutting. The diamond cutting disc also uses the easy lock system. This is a serrated saw blade for rotary tools. Now these might seem like a good bit for cutting into wood, but they are really not. Because when you use these, they have a tendency to get jammed up into the wood and they will produce a heck of a kickback. So it's just very unreliable to use when you're actually cutting the wood and you have to pay 
so much attention and keep a very steady hand whenever you're using these to cut wood. But I have found them useful for cutting some hard plastics like for example PVC. We also have some cutting discs that are specifically designed for cutting plastic. I don't really know the difference between these cutting discs and the metal cutting discs, so if you know the difference please leave a comment below. But these are mostly useful for cutting hard plastics that does not melt that easily. And as you can see here, they are supposed to be used for PVC plastics, which is a hard plastic that doesn't melt very quickly. If you use these on softer plastics, the plastic will melt and it will bog up the bit. As you can see, it has started a little bit here. And last but not least, we have the 562 tile cutting bits. Now, as the name suggests, this bit is designed to cut through tile. However, I do not really recommend using the Dremel to cut any type of tile unless it is just a small piece in the corner or something. Uh, if you are going to cut tile with a Dremel, it is going to take a lot of time. We have other better tools to use for cutting tile. But this is a great bit for any kind of general cutting purposes. I use this for wood carving all the time. It removes wood very quickly, so as a general purpose cutting bit, it is great. And that was all the bits that I'm going to cover in this video. There are so many bits for rotary tools and Dremel tools on the market today that I couldn't possibly cover all of them in this video. But if there is any that I didn't include in this video that you would want to see included, just leave a comment below and let us know about it. See you next time.